Because of their activities, Tasmanian fish farmers use large quantities of HDP, high density polyethylene, and wasted buoyant tubes are dumped or go to recycling. Maybe the flexible pipes, once adequately shaped and grouped together, could be reused in a way that resembles sloped profile beach, be reapplied to the fish farming industry for dissipation or wave energy, thus depleting the challenging environmental laws of the open ocean. I'll address this subject today by breaking up this presentation into a little bit of background of floating breakwaters, what is currently available and recent developments in this field, methodology applied, testing results of our floating breakwater and conclusions, and what is down the road. As we know, breakwaters can transmit, dissipate, or reflect wave energy. The aim is to minimize transmission. Reflection is often not ideal. Since this makes the sea state in front of the breakwater more energetic and chaotic. Hence, ideally, a breakwater maximizes dissipation. The extent to which a wave energy is dissipated by breaking, as opposed to being reflected back offshore, can be determined by the irrevary number. Ideally, a breakwater functioning by inducing dissipation through breaking would have been an it would have seen an irrevary number below two. To get breaking, we need a mild slope, which is the what we have in the beach. Here we have um, mentioning some of the most popular existing floating wave breakers using here McCarney's 1985 categorization. We can mention the box type breakwaters, which by mainly atten attenuates sea waves by reflection. KT results are shown here uh, for water depths of 10 meters and T between 5.4 and 14.9. Pontoon type floating breakwaters imitates the pontoon boat design and comprises at least two lengthwise pontoons that are usually rigidly um, connected at intervals. It is possible to achieve a KT less than 0.5 by regulating the natural period to the wave period ratio Tn over T more than 6.65. Mud type floating breakwaters, besides scrap tires, other materials have been proposed to design this type of breakwater. Several studies define the best efficiency of this design um, if it's width is at least half its length and the height of the wave breaker is greater than 1.2 times the wave height. Floating wave breakers are known to be ineffective in long waves unless their size is comparable to the wavelength, which is impractical and not cost effective. I show here a special type adding porous plates. Zeng and others in 2018 added added a serial of opening holes on both sides of a pontoon floating breakwater to dissipate more wave energy. The results, including the comparison of transmission coefficients KT at different incident wave heights, were used and compared with values of RKT obtained during our own experiments. In these graphs, KT is plotted against T and it can be seen from this graph that the KT of long waves at three different wave heights is close to that of the traditional floating breakwater. In first stages, the breakwater was kept into position using sandbags. The goal was to demonstrate that the overall efficiency can be greatly improved using beach-like flexible structure instead of rigid bodies. On the right, we see a schematic setup uh, of the experiments. Using a scale factor of, point of 50 and using the froth scaling, we uh, also apply a varying um, water depths. From the results, it can be seen that the floating breakwater raft model, as it was in its preliminary stage, was working as intended by dissipation through breaking waves. First experiments were conducted with the model at the original full length shorten it at later stage. They were also conducted with the model pipes empty, and then we fitted 
with water to one third of their length to alter the shape of the breakwater and reduce buoyancy loads and analyze the effects, if any, of that difference. Various configurations of regular and random waves were run. Stage two of the investigation was run under three different breakwater configurations. Our study develops a novel floating breakwater using HDPE pipes common in the aquaculture industry, which automatically adopts the shape of a parabolic beach. Here, we can appreciate the remarkable dissipation of an incoming regular wave equivalent to 7.5 meters height and approximately 17.7 seconds period waves. Note that the floating breakwater is here to its original three meter length. Here we can appreciate the action of the shortened version of the breakwater cut to 1.8 meters under regular waves, experiment 13. Results didn't show much difference between the longer and shortened version of the breakwater, which opens the door to investigation related to the material properties of this floating breakwater. Here we have again the shortened length to uh, 1.8 meters. It's the experiment number 14. Outstanding performance under long random waves, the maximum C was a 4.57 collapsing breaker type with a KT of 0.31 uh, and under random waves. Here we have a comparison graph displaying our measured transmission coefficients versus periods T plotted together with the weight dissipation performance results from Zeng et al. as mentioned in slide five. In this case, with our floating break water with water inside the pipes, which means a, low, a lower buoyancy force acting upwards. We here note that the values of KT, let, let us increase the size of KT for wave heights of 0 0.06 meters acting in any of the two floating breakwater tested by Zeng for our tra or traditional compared to a similar wave um, height acting on our flexible floating breakwater within the same period of range displays a clear better energy depletion performance for a flexible parabolic beach, meaning our device is highly more effective than um, the comp for the comparable wave characteristics, which range of period spanning all the way from 0.6 to 2.5 seconds. The important thing is that is, it is much better in this uh, green circle area uh, that also can be extended um, to the range of operation up here in the uh, if the transmission, even if the transmission coefficient is up 0.6. We tested, as mentioned before, also the effect of our breakwater with no water inside, and the result shows comparable values of KT for lower periods than those of the pipes with water inside, with a slightly lower performance, meaning higher values of KT under 2.5 seconds waves. Let's conclude this presentation saying that it was effectively demonstrated that the overall breakwater efficiency can be greatly improved using a beach-like flexible structure instead of rigid bodies. So the answer to the question, is it possible to design a floating breakwater that works under large waves and long periods 12? Yes. However, further experimentation is needed and that is what I am currently doing as a continuation in my PhD career. Thank you very much.